Hello and welcome to Bond Jam, the James Bond podcast. My name is Simon Jeffrey and I am joined by my good friend and former colleague, Mr. James Turner. Hello. Now come along and listen to us talk with the Bond Jam. Go and have a lovely little walk with the Bond Jam. Let me put it on and go to bed with the Bond Jam. Or grab yourself a slice of toast and spread with the Bond Jam. Hello, how are you, James? I'm fine, thank you. Are you, uh, are you good? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Been looking forward to this. Uh, why are we here? Well, we're here to talk about Bond, I guess, really, aren't we? Yes, but why, why, why a podcast? Well, I think it's something to do with how passionate we are about the subject, mm. and um, and we have good knowledge on the subject, and I think that's something that we need to share with others, I guess. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think for me, it was very much like these were conversations that we have anyway. Yes. Because obviously we live opposite ends of the country. Yep, yep. And I just find, you know, with like social relationships between friends, very easy to lose touch with people, isn't it? Yeah. And um, it shouldn't be the case, but sometimes if if you've left it too long, it's not socially acceptable just to start a conversation, just say, hey... You know, because yeah. the other person you always think is going to be like, "What? What do you want? Why? Why are you starting this conversation after? <laughs> Why are you contacting me right now?" Exactly. Yeah. But if you have a reason, then it's like a regular appointment to to reconnect in a way. Yeah. Even if four weeks, five weeks, you know, four months pass, we can just start a conversation with. So, when's the next episode coming out? And no explanation will be needed. No social uh, faux pas has been committed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. Uh, James and Simon never spoke again <laughs> after <laughs> this. How, how did we meet? Can you remember? I remember quite vividly, actually. Because oh, so, oh, I really don't. So I'll, I remember because obviously uh, me and yourself, we both went to uh, the same uni and that's how we met. But um, we were in the same uh, characterization class. And if you don't know what that is, that's. Um, it was basically acting class. We did a performance. We did what is it? Media and media performance, performance course, yeah. which was um, basically acting. Yeah. With a bit of filming and technical yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I remember because I lived at home. I was there quite early, and we had to meet like four hours later in the centre of Manchester. And so I just went to the library to go on the internet just to browse the internet. Right. Because obviously we didn't have smartphones back then. Well, some people might have done it, but I don't think well, this they were. Was, this, I don't was think that was that. this was 2007, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? I didn't have one. I think, no. the, I think the first iPhone came around that time. Yeah, but. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so anyway, I remember being in the library. I think you sat next to me. Because you probably had the same idea, sort of thing. And oh, really? I, I, I sort of knew it, so I was like, oh, yeah, I wasted okay. a lot of time in that library. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember because I was looking at my James Bond website and I was like reading an article on Goldfinger or something. And then uh, you just like turned your head towards me. It's like, oh, so you uh, you like uh, you like Goldfinger? Eh? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm a bit of a Bond fan, and I think you ended up revealing how uh, how you're a Bond fan too. I and, leapt uh, into your arms. Yes, this is yes. all sounding very believable. But I literally have no recollection. Reco- no, no. And so th- we ended up because we were a passion of filmmaking as well, and little short films that we've made, showed them to each other, and then Was we that all up, in that same day. Or? All in the same day because we had four hours to kill, and we ended up walking to Manchester. Well, we properly like yeah, so fell we, in love yeah, at first we, sight. We, didn't we, we? we bonded quite a bit during that uh, that time, and then so we knew each other quite well by the time we uh, ended up at this. Uh, I think we had to meet at like Costa Coffee. In, uh, I remember that. Piccadilly. I, I yeah, remember yeah. going out into town, and I mean, in hindsight, it was such like a DOS lesson. That was the lesson of someone who hadn't prepared it. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, we're going to meet in town and watch people. Yeah. That, 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 to, oh my God. To, to get ideas yeah. for your characters. It yeah, was, yeah. wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was, was like, the lesson. I want you to watch it. how people interact and how they walk. And I don't know. Oh my God. I, I, I'm doing teacher training, and if. I did anything like that as a lesson. I would not be qualified getting qualified. I mean, any qualification? I, I, and I'd say that. probably what seventy percent of your lessons revolve around James Bond in some way. Yeah, you you yeah. make sure that happens. <laughs> so, I mean, so many things that we did at university. I look back and think, oh, what's that about? I, do you remember doing that screen kissing module in TV acting? Oh classes, yeah, yes I do. Where we essentially just got given a script that at one point had a kiss in it. And we had to just act it on camera, one after the other, maybe 12 people in the group. Honestly, that was the weirdest lesson I've ever done, because I remember sitting there going, what the hell's going on? But then everyone was just kissing around me, like, snogging their faces off. Do you mean rehearsing it? I mean rehearsing, yeah. I didn't rehearse mine. You not rehearse yours? 
Oh. We were rehearsed the words, but we never rehearsed the kiss. Oh no! Did you do that? Did you re- did you practice the kiss? Yeah, we practiced it. Yeah. Well, I had two partners. Yeah, again, I know that. Yeah. Um, and I didn't practice with either of them. No. We just literally went through the words, and then we say yeah. sort of like, "And now we kiss," yes. you know. And at the end of the lesson, did we all sit and watch the recording back as well? We tended to. Do yeah, that. I think. Yeah, I think so. Maybe. Like, yeah. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, I liked how you did that with your hand. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing I've ever done. But there were a couple of people I remember saying, yeah. oh, no, it is really important because if you get cast in a TV show, then you'll need to know how to do it. And I'm yeah. like, I don't need to be told how to kiss. I've watched Bond films. <laughs> I've seen Roger Moore sucking face. <laughs> if, you, if you take kissing lessons from Roger Moore, you've, you've gone wrong. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, very, very strange. But I don't remember... I don't remember meeting you in the library, and I feel bad. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Because I was trying to think when we met at uni, and I couldn't remember that instance. The, the the one that I really felt like we took our bond to the next level, if you pardon the pun, wasn't till third year when we were editing a project together. Yes, yes. And we spent God knows how long, a couple of weeks, in the editing studio at the university, mm-hmm. and I was editing it, and you were pretending to help... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I had any reason to be there. I think officially you were sound editor. I was, yeah. For whatever reason, there was a lot of kind of waiting around. Were we waiting to render stuff? Or ex- yeah, I, I did think you did have to render like every two Final seconds. Final Cut wouldn't let you preview no, audio. You couldn't, you couldn't play it back properly. Where, whereas Premiere would have a go. Yeah. Final Cut would be like, no, yeah. it's not rendered. It would just beep, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, we were forever having to wait for, like, a couple of minutes at a time because we were just rendering the whole lot every time for the hell of it. Yeah. But we would just be like, well, while we wait, why don't you try and put the Bond films in order of yeah, preference? Yeah. yeah. It started with, like, the obvious category. So it was, it was favourite film, and then it was, you know, best villain, films, best yeah. Bond girl, best song, things like that. Um, we uh, we did that for years, didn't we? Like, yes, we kept yeah. coming back every yeah. time we'd do another list. Sometimes we'd do the same category again and compare. We what we did changed. it all. Yeah, we did it all the way to Skyfall. That yes, one. we've not done Ace Inspector, have we? No. Well, this is sort of a replacement. This is the yes, evolution is, yeah. of that. But we uh, essentially we've been having the same conversations for about ten years or more now. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is a scary thought. Yeah. Oh my god. But yeah, so what were some of the more obscure things we ranked the films in order of? Uh, one of my favourite ones was Sacrificial Lamb Effectiveness, <laughs> which we, where we ranked the... So what um, does that mean? The, the, we ranked the sacrificial lambs, so people who died and it was but meant in, to cause impact and emotion. In terms of emotional effect. Emotional effect on, the, on us as, as, a, as an audience. So member. what would an example of a good one of those be? I always liked Mathis's death yes, in um, okay. Quantum of Solace. And, um, and a bad example? Bad example. Luigi in For Your Eyes Only? Yeah, that is a <laughs> classic, classic one, even though I do like For Your Eyes Only. Well, did we do combined... Wasn't it combined... Combined sac- sacrificial lamb effectiveness. So I think... So there was more than one. I think Countess Liesel would have yes. bumped that yeah, up the list a little bit, because I think yeah. we cared more about her. Yeah, So I Because I think I remember reading a fact from a different book I'd read as a kid about that, and it basically said... Luigi is only in that film to be the sacrificial yeah, lamb, yeah, yeah. and he's not needed because there is one anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think it was that essential Bond book that we both had. Yeah, that, was, yeah. that, that informed a lot of my opinions. Oh, uh, absolutely, It'll almost to a fault. I yeah. don't, and that's the thing with this podcast and and what we hope from it is, um, on a selfish level, I want to do this because I like talking to you about Bond. Yes, and if no one else listens to it, then that's okay. Yeah, I'll probably still be listening to it. Obviously, we'd love you if you listen to it, and uh, uh, we'll tell you how to. You can contact us to let us know you listen to it. But as much as we both have our opinions on certain films, mm-hmm. and we've got our favourites, they're very subjective views. Some of them are very personal to us. And yeah. I think if we're honest, we both love the Bond series. Yeah. So even if we're critical about some things, like we still like that film. Yeah. For instance, and we'll get onto this in a minute, but. We both, I imagine, came into the series at different times, and Mm -hmm. our first film would have been something different to each other. Yeah. And so that might mean that that film holds a special place in our heart. Yeah. When someone talks about a film that I really like, and they point out something, I can sometimes say, yeah, I know, but I still love it. Yeah. And so 
there is always the possibility that my yeah. least favourite Bond film might be someone's childhood favourite or the one they saw first or the one they came to most recently so it's the freshest. Whatever reason, there's a reason why someone might love any one of the films mm-hmm. the most. Yeah. And so... There was a couple, I won't name them because I can't remember them, but (laughs) I wouldn't name them anyway. There was a podcast where within like the first sort of few minutes of them, they'd kind of basically said that film was a steaming pile of, you know, whatever. And it's like, well, I don't want to listen to this anymore. I don't really like your opinion on this because uh, now I feel like I can't identify with you because you've ruined my dreams. (laughs) (laughs) So um, with that in mind, what was your entry point? Do you remember? My entry point is in terms of the film or my actual first... Like, what was your first experience of Bond as, as like that you can remember watching a Bond film? The first Bond film I watched was probably The World Is Not Enough at the cinema. And you hadn't seen any before that, like, on TV? I, oh, or... I'd probably seen bits of them, but I don't think I'd ever seen a Bond film all the way through. Mm. Um, but that's the one where I, I go, oh my God, this series is, this is a cool series. I, I want to find out more about this. And then the, the, the marathon on TV, and that's where, where, right, I'll go, it'll start from the start, mm. so I started watching Doctor No all the way up to Tomorrow Never Dies. And did you then watch them in order? That's when I watched them in order, So yeah. did you yeah. watch The World Is Not Enough, and then you were like, right, I'm going to dig out Doctor No? I did, well, it was it was just on TV at the time, right. during the ITV marathon, but the double heaven marathon that you had. Golden Eye or anything else? I pull, yeah, <laughs> in fact, I pull, I'd probably watch Golden Eye, mm. and maybe Tomorrow Never Dies before then. So I'll offend Paul, but I had it on video. <laughs> so the world is not enough. Then does that still have that special place in your heart? Do you think? Yeah, because I mean, once it came out of the cinema, I watched it at the cinema, and I think we managed to get like a pirate VHS tape of it. Before we don't it came- condone yeah, piracy yeah, yeah. in any form, and we <laughs> recommend you buy a legitimate copy. But if you have to, then go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember having that tape, and I just watch it over and over I, and that yeah and that's that's why it holds I, high. I generally sp- I have memories as, as a kid because I think people now are just spoilt for choice and what you can watch like Netflix means you don't have to watch the same thing more than once mm-hmm. necessarily but I remember being in a house where we, we probably had like a dozen films on tape recorded off the TV Yeah, and so in my head it's like I feel like I watched the same film every week for like a year. Like certain films, I just feel like I've watched hundreds of times. I just oh, yeah, probably yeah, yeah. haven't watched them as many times as I think, but like some of the Bond films certainly were that. So for me, one of the first ones I remember watching, knowing it was a Bond film, was Tomorrow Never Dies. Yep. We'd yeah. rented that from Blockbuster Video Store, rest in peace, <laughs> um, for my birthday, probably my... Uh, 11th birthday I suppose had all my friends round sat in the living room and watched it on my old 15 inch little TV (laughs) that was you know 3 metres away from you as used to be the case in the olden days in the living room but we were all just gripped by it and then afterwards we we ran about the house kind of playing Bond essentially like yeah, yeah, not really playing in any kind of coherent narrative altogether we were just rushing about doing our own thing yeah Shooting pretend guns at each other. Yeah, and I remember distinctly, like, I had a Game Boy, and I would be putting it on the door and pressing the buttons, mm. pretending it yeah, was, yeah. like, unlocking it. I think we've all been there, to be honest. Yeah, and it just sparked something in me. And, and I remember ITV did a, did a run of the Bond films on TV called Double uh, O Heaven, which, yep. if you Google that, you'll find something else now. <laughs> but because um, James suggested that as a name for the podcast, and I said no, no, I don't think we can. <laughs> um, but I caught that from "You Only Live Twice." That was that was the first one I caught on TV during that season of Bond films. So I didn't see the early ones until quite a bit later. But I mm-hmm. caught it from there, and I used to record them off the TV. And then I'd watch them like that week, and then if I didn't really think much to them, a couple of them I recorded over. Yeah. And I really regretted it later. It's just because, like, you know, I was a kid, so I wasn't buying the VHSs myself. I think my parents had got us, like, me and my brother, a blank tape each that we could record stuff on. Hmm. So I was yeah. like, I, it was precious real estate. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I recorded You Only Live Twice, and I watched that to death, and I still love it to this day just because it's sort of 
it's the most, or probably one of the most cartoonish of the of the Bond yeah. films. But I, as an entry point, as like a ten or eleven year old, it was it was just yeah. everything in that film. That film had everything for me. Uh, but then there were films like Live and Let Die, which I didn't really get at the time I don't think I think I thought it was just a bit strange yeah. as, a, as a kid and I remember recording over it I recorded over Diamonds Are Forever with Live and Let Die and then I recorded over Live and Let Die with The Man with the Golden Gun and then I had The Man with the Golden Gun for years on tape and I watched that to death so I didn't see Live and Let Die again for probably a decade yeah. <laughs> like just um, no, maybe, maybe not quite that much but yeah, like yeah. quite a long time before I saw that again and so that to me weirdly seems still quite fresh to me yeah. because all those years in the meantime where I was re-watching these old tapes to death until they were unwatchable that there was just that one of Rogers that I couldn't watch um, until I went out and started buying them on VHS at first I bought some of the older ones I'd missed yeah, I bought yeah. from Russia with Love and Thunderball yeah. I remember going to Woolworths when that was around <laughs> and buying them on VHS well I remember buying them and I think I missed Octopussy when I watched it on the Double Heaven that Double Heaven marathon mm. and Octopussy was one of the last VHS it's weird that we remember the same ITV yeah, <laughs> yeah. season of films but um, that was probably the last of the old Bond films I watched and that was like a whole new film to me because I, I didn't remember Roger Moore dressing up as a clown and anything like that but it was, there was a picture of that in that Bond book I was like oh I can't wait to watch this one because this is one of it's like the hidden Bond film that I've never seen I'd seen Never Say Never Again over yeah. Octopussy well I realised when I re-watched Never Say Never Again that I had watched it years earlier and not known it was a Bond film yeah yeah uh, maybe because it was missing all those things that make yeah, it a Bond yeah, film yeah. in a way, but I distinctly remember the bit at which I remember I'd seen it before was when he's massaging uh, Kim Basinger right. and then leaves the spa or wherever they are, and the woman comes in and says, "Oh, that man doesn't work here," <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I was like, "Oh my god, I've seen this before." <laughs> Every so often, very rarely, my parents would sit us down and say, "Come on, we're all watching a film together." You know, it didn't happen that often. Sometimes it was like uh, those magnificent men and their flying machines, and uh, we watched Oh Mr. Porter and you know, <laughs> old old so kind of films. Yeah. Like, some, what else did we watch? We might have watched Where Eagles Dare as well, which is one of my favourite films to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the films that they said, right, come on, we're watching this, was On a Majesty's Secret Service, and I think because it's like a you know it's George Lazenby, so it's a one-off. It didn't. I didn't recognise it as James Bond necessarily. Yeah. But something about that film and tone and like when I even when I watch it now, I think I remember that it's kind of got my parents' seal of approval. <laughs> they wouldn't probably have shown me Diamonds Are Forever or you know just one of the kind of more formulaic yeah, yeah. Or, or traditionally Bond-like films. But this one, they were like, right, come on, we're all sitting down as a family to watch this. And I was, now when I watch it, I'm kind of like, it's kind of... Uh, it brings back some nice memories. Well, this is my point, and it's, and it's like what you were saying about, you know, Octopussy for you being the one that it was like the undiscovered Bond. There's so many reasons why a Bond film might just resonate with you or stick with you or be your favourite that I don't want to go through and kind of say... There's no merit in this film whatsoever. Anyone who likes this film is wrong. Because, you know, even the weakest of the films, like, could have been the last film you watched with, you know, your parents or whatever. <laughs> so there's any, yeah. any number of reasons why you could love it. Yeah. So for you, The World Is Not Enough Yeah. was your first major this, Bond experience. That was, that was the turning point. That was the turning point, yeah. I may have watched a Bond film before <clears throat> then. My memory is quite vague. But that was the one where I go... This is this is amazing. So presumably that that became like the benchmark. That became your yeah. favorite film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that change? Has that been consistently up there? Um, Has it gone down at any point? Has have you had new favorites? There was someone at work who uh, who's got kids, and they said they were thinking about introducing Bond to, and they said, "What what would you recommend as being the first Bond film you wa- they watched?" Yeah, and I was like, well, "Was that enough? Well, was that enough?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'd still hold that. In that high regard, as that is a great starting point to watch a James Bond. I, film. I wouldn't disagree with that, and I think actually, generally speaking, Pierce Brosnan is a good place to start. Yeah, I recently introduced James Bond to someone who hadn't watched any of them, and mm-hmm. I started with Tomorrow Never Dies. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, another good good choice. Uh, for similar reasons. And I've seen people being critical of that film for being, you know, slightly kind of generic and a kind of more of a generic action film than a maybe necessarily a Bond film. Mm-hmm. But for me, that was... It's an incredibly accessible film. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to know anything about the series. No, no, not at all. And I think that's the same... But and it, was and it holds too. up yeah. pretty damn well, actually. It's really mm-hmm. well edited and put together. All the emotional beats still hit the right notes. And, uh, yeah, no doubt we'll get onto that in depth yeah. when we reach yeah, those absolutely. individual things. Uh, because what... Um, that We don't really have an overarching plan for this series. But, broadly speaking, I think what we're going to try and do is cover... Go, each individual go through the films. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the next episode will be on Doctor No. Yep. We'll start at the beginning. Uh, but then in between the bespoke individual film episodes, we're going to be covering more specific elements of the film in more detail. So we might be talking about Felix Leiter one week or, or something like that. And that'll be completely random. That'll just be uh, what we what we think about as it comes along. Yeah, and a lot of that is kind of based off our original Bond list that we did back in the uni days, so it's kind of going full circle. It's really. taking all of that information and conversations we've had and kind of trying to put it through some kind of filter to make it uh, a coherent ramble. Yeah, yeah, but with structure. A ramble with structure. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully you'll join us for the journey. So... That was the first episode. I think that was a nice start. It actually reminded me of how we met, which yeah, was nice. Yeah, I, I know, well, that's a nice trip down memory lane. But, yeah, uh, it but, gave me back a memory I thought <laughs> I'd lost. But the episode, this episode was just kind of just, just to get to know us. Uh, and then if you want the true Bond stuff, then... Yes, the proper discussions season. will start as of next episode, so stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook at, at BonJamCast, and we're on Twitter at Bon Jam Cast and on YouTube at oh what is it? <laughs> it's Bon Jam Cast on YouTube. It's the James Bond podcast. Uh give us a search, give us a like, share it with your friends. Turn off your phone, James, you're so unprofessional. Uh, I've just asked okay. I'll wait. Right, we're on we're on flight mode now. Do I have your attention? Yes. Yes, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. We might not say much, but we're there. So follow us and uh, stay tuned. Uh, That's all from me. And me. Okay. (laughs) See you next time. Bye. Bye.